everybody. Welcome to the party with a nuts head. It's just a rap thing. And we're back with episode 80 of The Sounds of Struggle. I'm Chris Parrish. Joining me is the returning. The reigning, defending, cruise champion, me. Uh, it's Maniac. Yeah. Fresh off the boat. He's like an immigrant. Yeah, but better. And legal. Yeah. I belong to something. Oh, man. Mike Maloney. Q. The immigrant song. Right By now. By the way, Mike Maloney, you're fucking wrong, bud. I read last week's synopsis. Alexander, or sorry, Alexi Yashin did not wear 79 with the Ottawa Senators. He wore 19. He wore 79 with the uh, New York Islanders. Yeah, I know. You're fucking wrong, bud. He's a Bills fan. He's dumb as fuck. Dumb fucking fuck. Yeah. And he flat out said this is his thing. Because I named it the Brother Parish episode, and he's like, oh, let's put Yashin in there. Fuck you. It's our podcast. If you want a re- description, ask us. You get fucking fired soon from this, bud. Yeah. We're going to take our talents to South Beach. Step into my office because you're fucking fired. Yeah. You know what's not? Oh, speaking of getting fired, Big Cass fired by the WWE. That was a segue. It's like one of those segues you ride, but not. It was like just right there. Yeah. Yeah. In the words of Enzo Amari, how you doing? Yeah, I can't say I'm surprised by this. I mean, I am a little bit, but not really. You know, out of the three. It's amazing that Carmella is the champion. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Well, it's actually funny that both women champions in the WWE are money in the bank cash-ins. However, we'll get to that in a second. Just wanted to say, out of the NXT trio of Big Cass, Enzo, and Carmella, who would have thought Carmella would be the only active wrestler? would be the only active one as of, like, now. Because she's w- a hua. I guess she is money. And Mella is money in the bank. <laughs> well, not this year. But she was. Yeah. Not this year, but she was. Uh, she's defending her Ro- SmackDown Live woman's title this year against Asuka. Asuka. And, uh, yeah. Should I was going to go ahead and say it. Did not expect to see James Ellsworth. Well, I mean, I'm just Did saying. not at all. I mean, I'm just saying, I heard the rumor. I said it on the podcast, and it happened. I also want to point out, we were right about a hell of a lot of that show. No, I'm just saying, uh, you know. Two weeks ago. We're, we're like gods when it comes to this stuff. Two weeks ago, I said a blonde was going to win the female one, and Alexa Bliss won, and cashed in and won, yeah. which I said that would possibly happen. If she was to win, she would cash in that night. And she did. Uh, Mike actually knows for a fact that as soon as Alexa Bliss won, I said she's going to cash in that night, and she did. So uh, regardless of what uh, stupid things he says on uh, Facebook, uh, he knows that I was right on that one. And then uh, we did say that Asuka was going to lose. or We did say she'd either win or lose, but it would be by disqualification. She wouldn't win the title. And again, we were right. Mm Mm-hmm. Though we weren't quite right by, you know, who was going to do it. But still, we were right. Also, you know what? I, okay, I'm also going to say that because James Ellsworth came in dressed up as Asuka as a distraction that allowed Carmella to get the one, two, three. Now, I have two gripes about that. One, why does Asuka need to sell the fact that James Ellsworth is there? As much as she did. She would kick him in the face. Because in all honesty, why the fuck would Asuka give a living shit about James Ellsworth? I don't know. she kick him in the face. Two. The last time he saw James Ellsworth in WWE was when Carmella threw him out. Yeah. So why the fuck does he come back and is helping her? Because he loves her. Like, seriously. It's a Romeo and Juliet story where he plays both Romeo and Juliet. I mean, can WWE just for once understand that, yes, you do things, but in six months, seven months later, people remember it. Stop I'm, treating us like fucking morons. I'm really hoping that this is a one-off, but I have a feeling it's not. No, he's on SmackDown. Oh, God damn it. Man. Okay, I'm going up out on record right here and saying, I got back from the cruise Sunday. I watched, I think, three matches in total of the entire uh, TakeOver... Money in the Bank, and Raw and SmackDown. 
<laughs> I've seen literally nothing. So I'm running on by what I've read. So anything I say that you haven't seen, you're not going to get mad at me. No. Okay. I pretty much had all the Well, spoilers. we are recording on the Tuesday, June 20th. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday uh, the 20th. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah, it's... But, so, SmackDown's already been done. Yes. Raw has come and gone. So, everything... We're not actually spoiling. Because no. everything's even done by the time we're recording. Yes. Um, spoilers. Yeah. Um, Spoiler, no spoilers. So, we'll start at... I mean, we're talking about uh, Money in the Bank. So, we'll finish Money in the Bank. Yeah. So, Alexa Bliss won Money in the Bank... Hooray! Um, and as we predicted, Ronda Rousey did not walk out champion. Yeah. Although but, she won. But neither did uh, Nia Jax. No. Because Alexa Bliss cashed in during the match. Well, she came in and attacked... Well, she whatever, came in and attacked anyways, yeah. Ronda Rousey first, who was in the brink of winning um, the match, or so it looked like. And then... Decided after that, after she took out Ronda Rousey, to then cash in and defeat Nia Jax for the one, two, three. So she is now the new Raw Women's Champion, making her a three time Raw Women's Champion, but making her a five time Women's Champion. Really? Five times? Twice on SmackDown, three times on Raw now. Yeah. I remember one. I don't remember the second one in Raw. She, she won her first one in SmackDown against uh, Becky remember, Lynch in the tables match. Yeah, losing. Then she and lost then to Naomi, back. got it back. Yeah, and then she then, moved. Then she uh, won it uh, against uh, Sasha Banks on Raw. Okay. And then lost it at Sasha, at Sasha Banks and won it back on uh, her first defense back. On the. I don't remember that. Yeah. That's the one I don't remember. Okay. Because remember when? Because uh, that was when she held the title for a while. And then Sasha won at the pay-per-view. Or no, I think it was the pay-per-view. And then she won it back on the Monday Night Raw in her title rematch. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying I don't believe you. I just yeah. I, I don't, so, do not remember that one. So, yeah. So, marks her fifth reign as women's champion now. Um, yeah. It's crazy because it's been, like, what, three years since she's been on the roster, if that? Yeah. So, uh. Good for her. Yeah, and Charlotte, Charlotte's only been, what, four? Mm, or five? Five with the uh, yeah. SmackDown. So, yeah. I mean, hmm. the goddess and the queen are tied. Who would have thought? Both blondes. Yeah. Speaking of it, side note, uh, Charlotte doing the uh, ESPN naked, whatever the fuck you call it. Body shoot. Body shoot. Yeah, that's the fucking thing. Uh, so, that's cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've already seen all the the yeah. nudes. Yeah, we already saw the leak. So, uh, you know, what are you teasing us with now, Charlotte? Come on, sexy pics. And the, sexy pics are good pics. Well, apparently, is uh, now taking time off to fix her uh, implant issue. Good for her for going this long. Yeah. Uh, that's what we say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, what else happens with Money in the Bank? We saw the Bludger uh, Brothers. We saw at the beginning. Bludger of the Brothers show. defeated the Usos. No, oh, Gallows and Anderson. Kidding. Oh, right. yeah. But yes. Um, but here's a match that never happened that I was surprised with because we got teased with it. Matt Hardy, um, Bray Wyatt defending against B-Team. Weren't we not told that was going to be a Money in the Bank match? I think so. I'll be honest. I, I don't remember. Never happened. However, Did it happen to Raw? No. But what we did see was Heath Slater and Rhino against Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. You know who popped up? Dressed as Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt on the screen. B team. The B team, and Matt Hardy played by Curtis Axel. Bray Wyatt played by his little brother, or little big brother. Wait, Wait. Bo Dallas is older. Bo, Bo Dallas is older, yeah. Oh, and Bo Dallas was funny as Bray Wyatt. Probably. <laughs> and they really do look alike, so it's kind of well, funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just gonna point that out there. Um, Second match. Was Danny Bryan for Big Cass. Yeah. And, well, I mean, now, as you've heard, Dan, uh, Big Cass is gone, so Danny Bryan obviously wins. Yeah. Um, second last match for uh, Big Cass, because he worked one house show in between and then got fired. Yes. Uh, which, what we're hearing about 
is not just the little person episode incident where he no, beat the mob. No, I've heard there's pa- a lot. Apparently there was a party bushes incident that they're saying is another Yeah, he thought he was being ribbed and he ripped like the bathroom door off yeah. its hinges. And just acted very inappropriate yeah. and unprofessional. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, needless to say, we don't know. We don't work there. Uh, not yet. I'll get yeah. into that later. Yeah. So, uh... Uh, next match, Bobby Lashley versus Sami, beat Sami Zayn. Yeah. So, that's pretty much what we expected there. Yeah, no, actually, the one match where we probably thought the crowd would have been out of it the least, we were wrong. They were into it? Oh, not... The fans were a lot less interested in one other match. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Um, here's one we were not right about. Rollins defeats Elias to retain the yeah. Intercontinental Champion. I was actually a little surprised by that. So, I don't understand... The reasoning of why Rollins cheated to win. If what, what, what happened? I, I didn't see it. So he, Elias went for a roll up. Yeah. Uh, grabbed the trunks. Uh-huh. Grabbed it too much to where it reversed. Rollins grabbed the trunks and won. I guess it's one of those, you know, he's cheating on a he's cheating a cheater. So that's but, it cancels out, I guess. Here's a little thing: Seth Rollins no longer Intercontinental Champion. Elias, not the guy who took it from him. That's why I don't understand why that made sense. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Congrats. Finally a champion again. Yeah. But goddamn time. Intercontinental open challenge on Raw. Boom. Dolph Ziggler. Well, which I believe, if I read correctly, with help from Drew McIntyre. Technically, McIntyre never touched Rollins. Uh, fair enough. So, um, yeah, it was one of those where... And the fun, the irony was, is Rollins lost the same way that he beat Elias. He went for a roll up, went over, and then Ziggler held the trunks. One, two, three. There you go. So, uh, yeah. Just don't understand why Elias lost if you weren't doing any. I don't know. That's what we'll get to in a minute. But, we actually yeah. sang like a full song on Raw though, too. So that's sweet. Maybe like the little slowly turning a baby face thing is kind of working. Working out, so... Um, yeah, back to Money in the Bank. Alexa yep. Bliss, we already talked about it. She won yep. Money in the Bank. Rowan Reigns defeats Jinder Mahal in a match that, I, from what I heard, no one gave a fuck about. Yeah, even the Care Bears decided to fuck off in that one. Yeah, not even the Care Bears can care about that match. Yep. It sounded like the fans were ruthless. But again, it's Chicago. So. The only thing missing was a Chris Benoit chant. Wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, next was Carmella def- uh, defeating Asuka, which we talked about. Yep. And then AJ Styles defeating Shinsuke Nakamura again. This is one I don't understand. Match Why? of the night, by the way. Match again, I haven't seen it, so I can't this say This was one of the best WWE matches I have seen on a build in a while. It was absolutely great in the sense of uh, we saw the low blow from Nakamura, and then we also saw on the floor where Nakamura's up, He's selling up on the announce table. He's kind of in the crouch position. He does his, come on. And then AJ Styles ruthlessly kicks him right in the nuts. Nice. Fantastic. Is that the end of the match? No. Oh, nice. Just like um, there was a Styles clash that was off the stairs onto the floor. Um, yeah, actually, this is a match I'll even recommend. You should see that. Best match that these two had, bar none. In their WWE uh, story. Well, there we go. So it seems just, like it seems like it capped it off. I say, I just I don't understand why you bring Nakamura up like that just to beat him repeatedly. It kind of kills the character. But at the same, but if it was a good match, then all you also out. turn him heel and you actually made some strides with him moving forward. Well, fair enough. And eh, you know what? Now we're getting AJ Styles versus Rusev, which I'm into. I'm so, that. so yeah, no, fair enough. Not fair too bad. Enough. Uh, the next after that was Rousey versus Nia Jax, which we talked about. Alexa yeah. Bliss coming and defeating. Um, then finally, this is one I did not see coming. The men's Money in the Bank ladder match where Braun Strowman wins. Came the monster in the back. I didn't think he needed it. No. But um, but I think, I have a feeling, he is not going to be the guy who takes the title off Lesnar. You don't think so? Apparently he's called out Lesnar for like SummerSlam, kind of like Rob no. Van Dam, seen nothing. However, I do think he will beat the guy who beats Lesnar in that night to walk out of that event champion. So you don't think he's going to face Lesnar? 
I think I still have a belief that Roman Reigns is going to be the guy that takes the title off Lesnar, but then Strowman Oof. takes it off of Roman Reigns immediately. So you get that giant pop at the end of the night. And Maybe. the fans leave mm-hmm. happy knowing that Reigns isn't the champion. But you might get Reigns and Strowman. Small little side note. You see who represented New Day? <laughs> yeah, I called that shit. Kofi Kingston. And everyone, yeah. everyone's like, oh, he did rel. Like, I'm like, I barely noticed him. Just because. I didn't watch the match, so uh, I, saw, I haven't seen it yet, so I, I don't know. So. Um, anyways, that was. Uh... Uh, actually, I also didn't see the match, too. I had too, too much of a. a f- other five foot fury I didn't really appreciate just you know biting my ta- ear off that entire match so I have to rewatch that yeah, the, yeah it sounds like you had a good time yeah it was yeah. um but yeah so that was Money in the Bank we'll rewind one day prior to the match that stole the weekend and that was NXT TakeOver Chi-Town where we saw the Undisputed Era this the- this match I actually saw, and it was hella good. Yeah. Defeated Danny Burch and Orny Lorcan, and you can tell Shytown town was into the Undisputed Era. Oh, super into them. But... And Adam Colby Bay. Yeah. But, even though they booed Birch and Lorcan during the match, gave them that uh, respect after that the match. standing so, O. Because it was that good. Yeah, and it's only a 16-minute match, but it seemed like it was good 25 Speaking minutes. Speaking of 16 minutes, that's how far we're into this podcast. How about that? Like it was planned. Just ironic. Uh, the second match, Ricochet vs. Velveteen Dream. I watched the first ten minutes, yeah. but I was incredibly no, sea legged from getting off. Fantastic match. It, it, what I saw was really good, but I fell asleep. Love the uh, Rock Hogan vibe that they put out. Yes, that was good. Uh, yeah, Dream is uh, the, definitely the future of. Like, I the enjoy movie. the show, but I mean Ricochet is definitely making a case of he might be. A special commodity in that company as well. Yeah. Uh, so he won with his 630. I think that's what they called it. The 630 cent on. Yeah. So he won with that after Dream missed pretty much an elbow from one side of the ring to another. Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we saw a purple rainmaker elbow from Ricochet on a Velveteen Dream. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was very interesting. Match. I'm going to have to go back and watch it because it, uh, it did look good from what I saw. Um, then we had Shayna Baszler defend against uh, Nikki Nick Cross. Beat her by technical submission. I'm yep. assuming the rear naked choke again. Yeah, we're, uh, the vi- one of the great visuals, too, of when she had it locked in, uh, Nikki Cross just had this big smile on her face right before she passed out. So she never tapped. Very good. It was actually a really good match to keep uh, Shayna strong, but also Nikki Cross strong, too, because she never actually tapped out. She never quit or anything like that. Definitely see them having another match in the yeah. future. Um, and then next was Alistair. You know what? I'm going to go on record saying we called this entire show. Yeah. God damn, we're good. Right. I'm just... Damn, we're good! And then next was Alistair Black defeating Lars Sullivan. I, I again, didn't see it, so was it good? Yeah, um, I'm going to give the uh, botch of the night to uh, Lars Sullivan, though. Okay. Um, black mass kick coming. He just falls. Now, Alistair Black throws it. Also spins his fist around to act like, okay, he saw them, that he didn't hit him. Yeah. But then did what any guy did when you see a freak on the ground. He covered him, like, instinctually. Yeah. Which was smart. So, uh, Lars Sullivan, that one was on you, bud. So, uh... Probably why he didn't win. Yeah. But, uh, took two black masses from Miles for Black to defeat Lars Sullivan, so... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, and last was Tommaso Ciampa defeating Johnny Gargano in a Chicago Street Fight. I heard it was good. Oh. The, um... You might want to just give him the match of the year. Give him a feud of the year. Like, of any... Well, a feud of the year, 100%. But that match of the year, for sure. This one was better than the last one? Well, you know what? I'm going to say the emotions are just are even higher. Plus, I mean, you're going from the New Orleans crowd to a Chicago crowd. Now, did... Uh, uh, like, everything was just perfect. Now, did uh, Candice LeRae get involved like we said she would? You know what? 
this is the match I'm not even going to spoil for you. But I know the finish. I know you know the finish. Okay. But you have to watch it. Okay. And I'm not going to... No, I'm not going to take okay, this fair, match fair, away Fair from enough. You. I appreciate that. You will... I will watch that later tonight. Yeah. And you will text me later tonight. So I will text you later tonight with a giant boner picture, probably. Yeah, probably. Completely unrelated, but... I'll even though I already have your phone... Up, or your penis on my phone. True story. Yeah. Don't... don't That's ask, how don't close tell. we are, people! Don't ask, don't tell. If you're friends with your friends, then tell me. Are there privates on your phone? Because if not, you're not that good of a friend! Yeah, we are intimate friends. Yeah. The bestest of the best. Uh, also, I don't know a lot about uh, Dominion, which happened just after for New Japan. Which I happened, never watched it. But I did hear that Omega and Jericho both won. Yeah. So congrats to the Winnipeg boys for getting the Intercontinental and the... Omega's first run as I uh, WGP champion. Yeah, heavyweight champion. And, oh, and the Young Bucks became IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. Yeah. So it sounds like a big show. Yeah, so, the, uh, the guy Jean uh, night right there. Yeah, Winnipeg slash SoCal guy Jean night. Good for them. Uh, wish I, I wish I got a chance to see that, but I was literally leaving. I think that night to go to uh, Vancouver, Hong Coover. Yeah, you left the night of Dominion and came back. The night of Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank. Yeah, I missed a ton of wrestling, and it kind of sucked. Well, like three shows, but still three big shows. Yeah. Um, also, what, remember earlier how I said uh, we'll get into you know us not working WWE right now? Mm-hmm. The Performance Center has a website, and you can apply to uh, get a tryout there. We should apply! But they should also just like say, hey, we need you. D- they should, but maybe they're too bashful to ask. They're, they're like, you know what, these guys are great. They're probably going to say no. We should do it! I don't know if we're... You know that ego, but uh, <laughs> well, you never know. Um, what day is it for? You know what? Shh, shh. Competition might be up. listening. Yes. Yeah. Hush. Um, Performance center really isn't doing anything. Just uh, carry on and uh, live your life. Like uh, you didn't hear anything uh, interesting. Etc. Etc. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Just your podcast. Nothing. Yeah. Good at all. Just the podcast. So hit us up if you want us. Anyways, yeah. uh, CM Punk Cole Cabana. Congratulations to them. Cleared of all charges against yeah. Dr. Amanda. CM WWE. Punk actually won some that last week because he sure as fuck lost his match in the UFC. Which, uh, at least it went the time limit. Well. Although he lost, clearly, at least it went the time limit. At least he made an effort to try to get to the finish of a fight. Whereas his opponent just didn't really care about finishing or ending that one at all yeah <laughs> so apparently both punk and that guy also cut from the oc yeah makes you wonder do you think he'll come back maybe ring of honor or something like that he said he wouldn't go back to wwe but again why, why ring of honor when there's another show in town all in i didn't say it Ooh. <laughs> uh speaking of which remember how was it two weeks ago we talked about how all in how they were t- talking and teasing about how they're going to be in msg Apparently, MSG is looking to host other wrestling companies, but WWE is being really shitty and saying no. So how about that? Well, I mean, that's why you put that clause in the contract, right? Yeah. So, um... I think, I don't know, I think when it comes down to renegotiate that contract, I think MSG might say no and WWE might be down, not be down anymore. Yeah, and depending on if that end of that contract is anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, but also speaking all in, apparently Cody and the Young Bucks said that they are going to broadcast this, so everyone will get a chance to see the show. Fucking a! Um, yeah. and let's watch it. That could be my bachelor party. We can watch it. So um, here's also the thing. So apparently you have Kenny Omega, possibly uh, going up against uh, Cody Rhodes in this. going to say this means it's new ja- uh, J- new Japan's champ against you know possible ring of honor champion as Cody Rhodes Dalton Castle and uh, Marty Skrull are in a triple threat for the ring of honor championship coming up I like it I oh no it. sorry it's not uh, Kenny Omega it's uh, Aldis uh, Nick Aldis the NWA champion so we could possibly see Ring of Honor against NWA, NWA champion. That'd be sweet. 
winner take all. So if Cody Rhodes wins the Ring of Honor Championship, there will be a winner take all match at All In. Winner take all in. So Aha! Um, that was a situation that if it happened, it's a confirmed thing. Perfect. So. Um, and speaking of that, the, would uh, you be all in on the betting spree that Cody Rhodes walks out of that show? I have a feeling he will win NWA, regardless of whether he's the uh, Ring of Honor champion or not. I think he'll win N- the NWA title. Huh. Nick Aldis has had it for a while. I bet you they put all their money on uh, on he's Cody had it Rhodes for like four months. Though? No, I think he's had it more than that. I think he's had it for at least six. Is that one? That I one? feel like it is. Um, moving on, other other members of, including Cody actually, of uh, Ring of Honor, are being joined now on the Jericho Cruise by members of Impact Wrestling. Yep. Things are picking up. You know what? Congrats, Jericho, as we were talking about. Well, the the ring- only person ever that we can think of who has worked with WWE, New Japan, uh, Ring of Honor, and Impact Wrestling in one year. Yeah. In one year span, he worked with all four of them. That's quite quite impressive. Just give him give him his ring for the Hall of Fame right now. That's what happens, Aaron. Um, also, backstory to why it's Impact Wrestling on the cruise was because apparently he approached WWE with the hopes of adding NXT wrestlers to this pop. Uh, which this. would have been sweet. Um, and that was declined. So he then called up his buddy Don Callis, and uh, t- Impact Wrestling now is uh, you can't, you can't. on board. Absolutely. With the idea of being on board. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just a- um, so let's transition into NXT stuff. Johnny Saint has been named the new WWE UK GM. Sounds like the UK is finally going to get their own show. It's about damn time. Mm. Well, I mean, they, uh, yeah, from, I believe the NXT UK is something that's taking off. Which, they just did their tapings yesterday and the day before for that tournament, yep. the King of the Ring style tournament. And, um, some news happening. What would that be? Well, we got new NXT tag champs. <laughs> Whoever could that be? Well, uh, it's Mustache Mountain. I climbed Mustache Mountain once on my uh, vacation. It was nice. Enjoyed it up there. Good so, view. Uh, yeah, Trent Seven and Tyler, don't call him master, bait, uh, yeah, yeah. are the new tag team masturbating champions. Yeah, they're the new NXT tag team champions. Uh, they defeated Roddy Strong and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. So, That's sweet. needless to say, I'm going to say now, War Games 2. Electric Boogaloo. Pr- pretty strong style and uh, Undisputed Era. Just going to point it out. Oh, I'm saying it. That would be fantastic. And if there's a third team, then I'm very interested in who that could be. Because <laughs> I really don't know. Could be, well, isn't there like some sort of faction that hasn't really debuted yet, but they've been doing a lot of house shows with NXT? Yeah, it's the one with uh, Wesley Blake. And, yeah. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. Could be them. Maybe not. Maybe it's just two teams. Like, why not? Yeah. Well, that's what it was originally. Yeah. Why not? You could even do because Bobby a, Fish could be back by that time. Yeah, you could even do four and then have either Danny. I'd say Danny Birch join. Have Oni Larkin kind of do his own thing, or uh, you know, or have Danny Birch and Oni Larkin join and have somebody else join uh, Undisputed Air. Why not? Or you can even have someone completely. Uh, because it was, I don't know. Or what about Wolfgang? Wolfgang could very well. Yep. Uh, be a part of that. Absolutely. Because uh, he just uh, had a match with the... Uh, he lo- On the same night, he uh, actually had an a match no- for the North, North American, American title with yeah. Adam Cole. Baby. Hey, bae. Um, um, yeah. Uh, more news from former NXT people. Leo Rush has been moved up to 205 Live, potentially working as a heel. Your thoughts? I want to see where this goes. I'm into it. I am. Um, I'm actually liking 205 Live a little bit lately. Um, not too bad. Ever since they've been pr- pretty much adding the Buddy Murphy into the, the mix. Uh, it's been some good matches. There's just a good triple threat on uh, the other day with uh, Buddy Murphy. Masaf Ali hit Deo Tommy. Yeah. Looks like a Deo Tommy could be the next contender for the Cruiserweight title. Yeah. Um, 
I'm also going to say I'd be for the Cruiserweight uh, division and NXT and UK, like all that, combining a little bit more and seeing all this take off. Also, wouldn't mind the possibility of seeing some Cruiserweight tag champions. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to make them uh, own brand, hopefully they get their own spot and they're not consistently being shown after SmackDown and taped after SmackDown. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it'd be really interesting if... Uh, it'd actually be good if they paired with NXT. They can do kind of a joint thing there. That'd yeah. There's a lot more uh, 205 guys in NXT than there are in uh, WWE main rosters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, what else? Uh, Brian Christopher Lawler is arrested uh, a week and a half ago uh, for not paying one thousand uh, dollar hotel room fees. So I'm not sure what happened there. Don't know much about it, but uh, that, that that happened, I guess. And uh, only because this is how much I care about Brian Christopher because I think he's an idiot. I can see that. Um, yeah, I'm also going to say, so Nick Aldis became NWA champion on December 9th, so yeah. Yeah. It's been a, Six it's months. It's been a horny hour. It's been a horny hour. Um, also, by the way, I use that for the first time outside of this podcast, um, and my boss had no idea what I was talking about, but it was kind of funny. I actually used it as well, and uh, I was on the cruise. Ironically, in Alaska, buying Cuban cigars. So, uh, yeah. The guy working the duty free shop, no idea what I was talking about either. Fair duty. Nah, <laughs> duty. Uh, last thing I have for wrestling is yesterday was Rey Mysterio Day in San Diego. 619. Nope. How about that, eh? I have one last thing, and it's going to end on a sad note. But we are now no longer with a Mr. Leon White, better known as Vader. As he Big Van Vader, unfortunately, as passed, he away passed away Monday um, night. Yeah. Yeah, so the discussion on the way down to the last Pure Power Wrestling trip was who was going to be the next class of uh, inductees into the Hall of Fame. And Is he not in? Personally, I want to know who would be your next uh, I say if he's headliner. Not, um, if, if he's not in, I'm actually, I'd be very surprised. If he's not, he should definitely be in it. So, um... Not just because of his passing, but just I think he should be in it regardless. Well, and that's kind of what I was saying. I thought he would have been a big name. I think The Rock should get in in the next couple of years. I think it's more dependent on his availability, but uh, he should definitely be in. He could headline for sure and have Big Van Vader as one of the first guys named after the fact. Um, so, I still uh, think Owen Hart and or British Bulldog should get in. Yeah, I, I think it's a very touchy subject with Owen Hart. I think it's more his widow, doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. I think she's the one who's kiboshing it. Uh, British Bulldog, not too sure if uh, that's the thing. But Vader, yes, no, he's not in the Hall of Fame. Huh. Uh, apparently there is a rumor of him, uh, him being inducted next year now. Um, it, unfortunately, he shouldn't have taken his passing to get in. He should get in regardless of his uh, his stature and his what he brought to the table for wrestling as a whole alone. But... I mean, now's, now's, it's better now, well, I shouldn't say better now, it's, now that it's, I guess, come to the forefront with his passing, it, I think he should be in the next class, for sure. So, in the UFC, I mean, they have different stages of the Hall of Fame, they have their Legends wing, they have their Modern wing, oh, they have the, you know, the Fight wing, so they have actual fights that they nominate in there. Yeah. We know that there's a Celebrity wing. Should there be, like, a Legends wing, or should there be a, you know, something like that? I don't think so. I think, honestly, w- if you get in, you get in. Because if they make an actual, like, Hall of Fame, like a building, yeah. all that stuff, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, those separations. Not that you're separating the people in there, but no. you're at least saying, hey... Okay, well, we got these people in this branch. We got these people in that branch. Like, I think it should be more like the NHL Hockey Hall of Fame. Maybe where you celebrate the guys, but you're also celebrating the time of the guys that were yeah. in the business. What's I think with the the Hockey Hall of Fame, they don't they don't have a legends. They don't have like everyone in there is a legend. It's more of 
they have like certain eras and they put whoever gets in they put them in that era but, kind of thing but like and here's like okay hypothetically I have their like their legends wing who are like maybe anybody in like you know 90s and beyond um and then you got your attitude wing so it's like the ones from the attitude era that became hall of famers and then you could have modern wing or something like that but that being said couldn't you technically have guys like big boss man in both or hulk hogan in both well, I think it's like when like, he last competed, where was he in? And well, that's if, if that's the case, Hogan would probably be post, uh, post-Attitude post Era. But, like, maybe full-time. Like, when he was, yeah. like, a really full-time worker. I mean, Hogan I, wasn't really full-time. I don't know. I just... I, I like where you're going with it, but I just... There's a lot of people that could be in multiple different eras, right? No, but that's the thing. Like, okay, like, when you think Boss Man, what do you strongly remember him for? Honestly, Attitude Era. So... That's what I mean. So, like, you put him in the Attitude Era. But, I mean, he did a bunch of stuff before, right? Yeah. Um, like Hulk Hogan. It's a, le- it's a legend. It's a legend, I guess, not, yeah. yeah. Um, Ric Flair, same thing. Shawn yeah. Michaels is an Attitude thing. Even though he really didn't partake in the Attitude well, Era. Well, his prime was in the Attitude yeah. Era. So, I think that's, kind of like, Steve Austin, Attitude Era, even though, yes, he was in. But, I mean, that there's that, like, you're just, you're celebrating also the evolution of the business throughout this Hall of Fame by having, you know, these uh, wings. Because the wings aren't s- changing, like, where you were. They're only now just celebrating the eras that took part in this business. I think, me personally, I think you have uh, little little things on the wall showing, you know, who got in what year, all that stuff. And then have just the general eras that they've had with just things in general even people that might not be in the hall of fame yet just different stuff somebody screwed up as you can hear you fool Uh, unlock your door and they said okay and they did that um but then i think too like you can also have your tag team wing and that could be anybody who's you know involved in the tag teams like so like the deadlies and then manager wing yeah i agree and then that could be like an anything like you know like I don't know. I think that'd be also a great way of like, okay, it's like we go here, not it's like going to the hockey hall of fame. You see a lot of things from a lot of different eras. And it's like, this is what I mean. Like if you actually had this actual building yeah, where you can go and check all this stuff out, you know, maybe this is where you actually have, okay, you got your selection of the wings here to uh, celebrate like the different eras of wrestling, mm-hmm. and then you can also learn about that era as you're there. That's that's where I'm getting at with okay. that idea. Well, I, yeah, I can see that. I think honestly they should build one. That the uh, WWE headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut, they should have a, a WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, for sure. Because that could also not only bring them in money, which they seem to like. I don't know why, but they seem to like it. But it could just... And it's just another revenue source. It's, well, also, it's a way to honor the people that, you know, were, have been in the business for years. And, well, also, we know how much stuff they have from their past. And we see it at the accesses. We see it on the WWE absolutely. warehouse uh, part, like, thing. Um, this is a place where they can have it all the time. Yeah. And then they don't actually have to store it. They can actually show it off and, you know make money but also people can go back and relive like the times where they saw all the old school raw logo sign like the entrance Smackdown you know where they fist things but I mean also how cool it would be if there was like a place where you know all you get to do was like you Um, know watch your entrances from your old favorite entrances or yeah they have like a massive warehouse where like the old Smackdown old raw the entrances were set up so you could actually come out and do your thing mm-hmm. like get access or do like a and photo then, shoot and stuff like that and then during big events like SummerSlam um, here's a wicked idea Wrestlemania you, you tear that down you send it to where it is and then you bring it back you have these sets there and then of like historical ones and then for you know you go there you get your picture taken your VIP package and then you for like 20 bucks you can get your own customized WWE, whatever year that is, uh, video game cover, and then you can buy. If you buy the game, you can get that cover on it. How about that idea? We are literally printing WWE money, right? Like, hire us, boys. Come yeah, on, seriously, Vince. You hear this? Come on. Like, we could be the curators and the guys who run the Hall of Fame, the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah. We could make them millions. 
wait, wait, billion. Why make them billions when we could make them millions? Yeah. That's a little bit of all right. That's, all, that's struggle-ishes. Because, uh. yeah, even just doing that way, you can print it off. You can slip this little picture in the cover of WWE whatever year. Yeah. Boom, there it is. You are the cover. Or you can do your own custom entrance where, boom, you have it or to post on social SmackDown, media. Or if SmackDown, you can get that, uh, um, like the SmackDown cover, like the video game cover or whatever. SmackDown, shut your mouth. Yeah. Or SmackDown vs. Raw. Yeah. Whatever you want. You know, personally, if we came out as a tag team, you know who I'd like to come out and cover us? Mm. Billy and Chuck. You love Who's our Rico? So good to me. Probably Mike Maloney, unfortunately. Oh. Well, do you have a better idea? Anybody? Fair enough. But as of right now, uh, Mur the Murph, my dog, he can be Rico. He's just as hairy. He's just as lovable. What you, was he an American gladiator? He fucking definitely could be. He's <laughs> ripped. Have you seen him? He's not American, though. No, he could be Canadian gladiator, which would be better. He's, and he's dressed to the canines. <laughs> exactly! I had to get that one out there. That was good. That yeah. was a song. There we have it. We, we, we are Billy and Chuck, and, and we have our Rico Murph. Like two gay guys, he likes a doggy style. Exactly. Also had to. There we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, shall we move I'm on? proud of that one. You should be. That's good. Yeah, that's, uh... Do you want to move on to? Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Random ball sports or hey, ball sports? Yep. Or that seems hockey. like the most appropriate transition. To ball this. sports. You hear the Eagles lost their invite to the White House? Yeah. Does well, anybody care? Really? Does anybody really care? No. Donald Trump uninvited you. Whoop de fucking do. Who cares? <laughs> You'd be like, you're fired. Honestly, it could be like, it, it could have been like you know if it was. Prime Minister Trudeau, or if it was Obama, if they had to invite you, well, fucking well, you're still the champion. Yeah, I wouldn't even go see what's Trudeau. But what's the matter? Even if you don't get invited well, to the White House, my cousin's house, because my cousin's his bodyguard. Yeah, so I'd, I'd go see just see my cousin. Um, yes, but I mean, really, you get uninvited to either the. Uh, so this is anybody. If you're actually gonna go shoot the Prime Minister, uh, the taller guy, that's my cousin. Don't shoot him. Just make sure you actually get the Prime Minister if you're gonna do that. Wow, we at uh, we here at Sounds of Struggle do not endorse what you just said. Well, I'm just saying, don't shoot my cousin. Your opinions are your own. Okay, fine. I'm enough. just asking people not to shoot my family. Okay, fair enough. I mean, but also don't shoot the prime minister. And if you're gonna take a shot, at least you know hit your target. <laughs> Stay on target, oh. but don't do that. But anyways, um, <laughs> but really, at the end of the day, you're still a champion. Ball sports led to murdering her prime minister. And the we, range of this podcast is and we phenomenal. Here at, we here at Sounds of Struggle do not condone that. If it happens, it's unfortunate, but we do not condone that. No. By no Anyways. means you think, or should I want you to think, that I want the Prime Minister to be shot. Because I don't. We want him impeached, not I, shot. I just want to give him a wet willy and a wedgie. Maybe a swirly. At That's the same about time. it. That's about it. Moving on. Oliver Luck is named the new XFL commissioner. Do you know who this guy is? Yeah, it's Andrew Luck's dad. Really? I yeah. did not know that. I knew he played a little bit <laughs> in the NFL, but... I think that's where you were going with it, and I just informed you. Well, lucky him! <laughs> Luck is for losers. Yeah, just, yeah. Look at the Yes, Eagles. they are! Um, I have two things here about uh, CFL. One, Terrell Owens has been added to the Eskimos negotiation list. Sign him! I fucking hope this happens! It'd be amazing! Who wasn't a... Uh... Terrell Walker is not... What number is he? Uh, 87, I think. Okay, because he's not 81. No. That was... Who's 81? I don't know. Well, if there's nobody, that means it's open for T.O. Plus, I just saw a video... I that... would buy a T.O. Eskimo jersey. I would seriously consider it. I mean, I just got my personal customized one done, but I consider getting another one just for that. Maybe a white one. Yeah. Um, I honestly... Uh, white one. That's kind of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Because um, you did get the green one we should add. Back. Yes. We, yeah, I got the green one. Um, but I will say, I just watched a video I just watched a video the other day. He can still do the 40-yard 40, 40 dash. 4.4 4 seconds. And four point, that's, for 41 years old, that's fucking you insane. You know who recorded it? Julio Jones. That's impressive. He still He receiver. still has it. He still, he still got it. Oh. I mean, now let's see if he can do that in the roots and all that stuff, too. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, um, and the last thing for CFL, streaking 
BC Lions fan. Who got murdered. Which, again... By a hit, not in real life. But, again... I don't want murder being a theme. Actually. By Marcel, Marcel Young. But here, here's the thing. He ran on it's, the field. It's exactly. He ran on the field. It's like when you come into a wrestling ring, if you're not a wrestler, we will defend ourselves. This is what we do. We don't know what these people are going to do. So you take action to protect yourself and your teammates and everyone else. And he's lawyering up because he has, and I quote, minor traumatic brain injury. How is traumatic brain injury minor? It's one or the other. Fucking pick one, you piece of shit. You probably get your bell rung and have a minor concussion. That's not traumatic. Yeah. It was, if it was traumatic, you'd be having seizures and shit. Go fuck yourself, bud. You deserve this for jumping on the field. What this is, is one person. What does who, he expect to happen? That he's just gonna get the ball thrown to him for the touchdown? How dare that Marcel Young hit him? Let the fucking uh, security do that. No, fuck you. He's doing it to get the game going again. This guy deserves what happened to him. Yeah. He can go fuck himself. Not everybody wants to play in the second longest game that Winnipeg and the Eskimos did to start the CFL that season. That was insane. Right? That was, by the way, congrats for 1-0! Yeah. Woo! I mean, <laughs> it's only in Winnipeg where you're going to get weather conditions that are really outrageous. I'm just going to play Stopping several times because of the thunderstorm and some Jesus. other points of the game. Holy I don't shit. Know, I don't know who has PMS more, the women of Winnipeg or the weather in Winnipeg, but it's fucked up. The answer at 11, and it might shock you. Mother Nature's a cunt. Well, I can't even argue that one. That's just true. That's just factual right there. Yeah. But anyways, if you go on the field or on the on the rink, on the, in the ring, and you're not part of the thing, expect this to happen. Don't be fucking stupid. Leave it to the professionals. Moving on! <laughs> and he was a line, so you should really just be embarrassed, not post-traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch ass. <laughs> fucking um, lions. So, I... Briefly, I listened to it. Suck in two fucking forms of football. Like, holy shit, you must suck. That, that's true. Um, I listened to some of the podcasts you did last week. Yeah. Good work on your own. Thank I, you. I, I, mean, I do some of my best work by myself. Masturbation. I get that. Uh, I mean, that's it's, good. That's I mean, good. one man show here. Um, so, yeah. At times. But, you know, I, I prefer company. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, quick uh, quick recap. Congrats to the Caps and Ovechkin for winning the Consumite Trophy. Ovechkin and the cup, that's relationship goals. That's what I aspire to have one day, you know? Just the two of us. Yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. Hey, I am your cup. I'm going to lift you above my head later and drink from you. Yeah, I am. Also, congrats to the Avalanche for being the... Also, uh, that means I've been around and been in, like, many other men's people arms. Have, <laughs> so people have been inside you. Stanley Cup you, yeah. is a gigantic You're a, whore. <laughs> just a big whore. Uh, also, congrats to the Avalanche for being the biggest loser of the playoffs. And I, I judge this every year by going, the team that loses the finals, and you work backwards, every team that lost to them, they are the biggest loser of the playoffs. If so facto, the Avalanche. Because the Golden Knights lost in the finals, who beat the um, Winnipeg Jets, who beat the National Predators, who beat the Colorado Avalanche. They are the biggest losers. Congratulations to Colorado. Hey, at least you made the playoffs. Um, also, you know what? I'm making a prediction here. What's that? So, we're doing episode 80. 8 0. The. You know, Ilya Perskalov? What are you so mad? It's just game. Yeah. Um, but no. Next week is episode 81. Just so happens. Nick Antropov episode. Just so happens. It's the number of one Terrell Owens. So, maybe by time episode 81 airs. We'll have a T.O. episode. T.O. might be Y.E.G. bound. How about that? Man. Episode 81. The Toe Yag episode. <laughs> to Yag or not to Yag? That is the question. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! Also, Lars Eller and Nathan Walker, the first Danish and Australian players to lift the cup. So congratulations to them. Former Oiler, Nate Walker. Yes. Good for him. For uh, Also... I don't know if you touched on this last week because I didn't hear all of it, but women, woman at the Stanley Cup game flashed her tits from the Caps won the Cup. Nope. I love Vegas. I actually didn't talk too much about the details. I just talked about the Vegas won the Cup, and I talked about Ovechkin a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I, I decided I'd save some fun details for you. Hooray! So. Um, so, yeah, I love Vegas. Titties. Good yeah. times. 
Uh, Barry Kid, Trotz has... Titty Master Dean Ambrose actually lives, lives there. there. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Barry Trotz has stepped down as Capitals head coach because he couldn't come to an agreement on the extension. Oh, by the way, here's one last thing in wrestling that I am surprised you didn't touch up on. What is that? Because it's in addition to your family. Is it? No. Baron Corbin, proud member of the Bald Brethren. Is he? Yeah. Since when? A couple weeks ago. He became Constable Corbin, and then the net, very next week, as of uh, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before. So, so when I was gone. Yeah. He, Welcome, Constable Corbin, to the Bald Brethren. There you go. It's about goddamn time, and we welcome you with open, hairless arms. It's just saying, I really expected you of all people. I didn't know that. No, this this is news to me. This Man, is this good. Isn't, like, you just got a new branch in the family tree. Cobb. Uh, Constable Corbin, we openly welcome you. Welcome to the Bald Brethren. You want to be part of the Bald Brethren, send me your pictures on Twitter or Instagram, hashtag at ball or hashtag bald brethren, and tag me. You can be part of the Bald Brethren too. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, anyways, uh, Islanders, Fire Garth Snow and Doug Waite. I think this is a long time coming. Personally. At uh, Gar Snow has pretty much run that place into the ground. There's rumors that uh, Tavares is out of there, so yeah. See, I'm that. hearing uh, the more this goes, the closer he is to uh, re-signing. Really? Yeah. Oh, how about that? Speaking of re-signing and trading, there's a whole bunch of drama between Carlson and Hoffman in Ottawa. Whole bunch of allegedly Hoffman's fiance was threatening death and bodily harm upon Carlson's wife and it was just a big just disgusting amount of just drama that led to Hoffman being traded not once but twice in one day yeah within like a half hour actually yes let's see here I can actually pull this up uh, Senators trade Hoffman to the Sharks for Mike Mikel Bodker and Julius Bergman, as well as a six-round pick, and the Sharks got Hoffman, a fifth-round pick, and Cody Donahue. But right after that happened, the Sharks immediately flipped Hoffman to the Panthers and acquired several draft picks. So that that happened. That was that that's something. Yeah, and then like mere days before that. Montreal Canadiens traded uh, Galchenyuk to the Arizona Coyotes for Max Domi. Do you see what number Domi's wearing? No. Number 13. Any guesses as to why? 13. I'm going to... Is that was his dad's junior number? No. His dad's number, I think, was always 28. Was it always 28? Close family friend, Matt Sundin's number. Fag. I guess that's his favorite player. No respect anymore for him. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can die. Um, murder is now a theme. <laughs> the murder episode, episode <laughs> eighty. It's just game. We so mad. Murder episode. <laughs> Gary Bettman also talked about how uh, salary cap's going to be moved to between seventy nine point five and eighty million dollars next season, roughly a four and a half to five million dollar jump. That's good news for the Blackhawk fans. Well, and no other fans, especially no other if we can't well. trade Lucic. Yes. Um. So that that that's also good. Um, and before I get into the NHL awards, which happened tonight, the last thing I have is Austin Watson, not Xavier Woods, Austin Watson, but God, he is so beautiful. Sorry, I'm distracted by Constable, beautiful bald brethren Corbin. That's a sweet new look. I enjoy that. Anyways, back to it. Austin Watson of the National Predators arrested on domestic assault charges over the uh, over the weekend. So yeah, that that's a thing. You know how uh, you should get uh, through this one. What's that? Take a page <laughs> of Xavier Woods' book and do what? Fuck page. Well, I'm just saying you should just take a page and not what? Not hit her? No, no. Well, well yeah. Not with your fist. No. With your dick. Yeah, with your love gun. <laughs> um, that song was about Paul Stanley's dick. Yes, it was. Okay, now moving on to the NHL Awards. Let's see here. Let's start off with the 
Ted Lindsay Award has gone to Connor McGabe for the second straight year. Congrats to Connor. Connor! Also became the youngest... Uh, Two-time recipient? Yep, at uh, the age him. of 21. Good for him. So. Uh, Lightning's Victor Hedman picks up his first career Norris Trophy, which I think during the regular season very much deserved. Playoffs? Yeah, at times, I guess. Yeah, no. Uh, Islanders Matthew Barzell landslide victory for the Calder Trophy. Yeah, he won by a couple votes. A couple fucking hundred. I think he had like twelve hundred, and the next close was like seven hundred. Yeah, he uh, he destroyed that one. Yeah, good job, uh, there Oilers. Could have had him. also throwing it out there. Um, Blackhawks uh, new guy in uh, Debrinket. He got 30, 30 votes. So good for him. Also, I'm just going to say this. What's you, uh, on Instagram, put a Tara Vine in jersey. Brady Six? Yeah. Yes. I don't have any picture of your jerseys. I'm just saying. You could have asked. Just, well, then send, send me a picture when you get home, and I'll, I'll add it. I'll, you can edit on Instagram. By the way, that's if anyone's wondering what we're talking about, I am doing a countdown to the maniac marriage via NHL, actually just basically sports jerseys. I've used a couple I knew you ones. weren't going to use uh, Crosby. Just going to say that. Well, yeah. And that's the thing. For 99, I didn't use Gretzky. I'm, I'm trying to use... Because Mrs. Maniac is doing this as well. You should have used uh, Roman Reigns' as Eskimo. I did not know he was 99. He was 99. I did not know that. Yep. Um, but no, I... Uh, we're Both Mrs. Maniac and I are counting down until our wedding, which is now... We're at 86 days to the big day. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we're both using a jury was sending a picture a day on Instagram, you know, with whoever we choose. You know, for number ninety four, do you know who I chose? Jason Bunt Senior. Not even close. I <laughs> chose Ryan Smith. But you know who the first name I thought of because of where I grew up? Oh there we go. How about that? Number ninety nine for Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah, there's no actual jersey. No, but the first the first uh, jersey I thought of. Sergey Bearson. Exactly. Yeah. Every time. You're happy I got that one, didn't I you? I really am happy. Good for you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Um, but anyways, so uh, we're doing a countdown. Unfortunately, because of my vacation, I had to throw ninety five to eighty eight all in one, yeah. which kind of sucks. But it was kind uh, of funny to watch because it's like, it's like one, two, three. You know what you should do? You should save all those, and then when it's done, you should literally just have that as a slideshow at the wedding. That's no, a fucking great idea. No, not at the wedding, but just on your Instagram thing and be like, yeah, remember the times, and then just go for ninety nine to one. Yeah, that would be good. So I have you a might even be able to do zero because I think there are a couple zeros. The NHL. There are. There were a couple zeros, a couple double zeros. Yeah. Uh, John Davidson, the goalie, and double zero. And if not, isn't there a guy on Mighty Ducks that was double zero? Like, yes, yes, there was. Yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's my plan. So if you don't have me on Instagram or you want something like at least to post today, watch and w- watch as I do this from now until then. I'm predicting Mrs. Maniac will tap out somewhere around seventy. I'm gonna go all the way. I'm going wire to wire here. You're going to do a freaking uh, Doug uh, Glatt jersey for 69, aren't you? Honestly, I don't know who else there is. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to. There's a couple. Uh, as we did the, the, the episode 69. Who was Keith Germain? Oh, there we go. Uh, when we did episode 69, we did the jerseys. And there's a couple I've never heard of in the NHL. So, I'm probably going to do Doug Glatt. Um, there's a couple I have picked out. I think number 70, number 39, number 19, number 4, uh, number 9, number 18. I have all, I have all those picked out. <laughs> the McKegg. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. Um, anyways, back to the NHL Awards. Brian Boyle picks up his first Bill Masterson trophy. <laughs> Nick so Baxter won 69 in the KHL. <laughs> there we uh, go. That's almost worthy. That's almost worthy. But So congrats to Brian Boyle on that. Uh, they also announced who is going to be the new cover uh, cover model, I guess you could say, of EA Sports Angel 19. That's fantastic. <laughs> and who would that be? P.K. Subban. And we saw the picture earlier. Kind of lame. I mean, they also have a Stanley Cup edition, which is Ovi with the cup, which is awesome. So... I mean, yeah, if, if I'm going to get the NHL 19, I'll probably get the Ovechkin Stanley Cup edition. I actually think that has to be it. 
Oh, McBackup. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Just, holy crap. There actually already is a freaking countdown. Yeah. It's, I've, I've, seen, I've actually seen that before. It's like they use the most popular player at that position mm. or by that number for the whole thing. But they had Gilroy as 97. Uh, this was done a couple years ago. That's why. Uh, if you look at 93, who it is? Some jobber. Fuck you. Oh, no. Wait, that's not Doug Gilmore. Who is it? <laughs> it's Randy Jopkins. Really? Let's see. Fuck off! <laughs> that's horse shit. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so congrats to PK Subban. Look forward to a very... Oh, got you twice, actually. Because yeah. you thought I met it the first time. Yeah. So, uh, congrats to P.K. Subban for having a mediocre season next year because you are the cover guy. Uh, also. You're thinking of that one. That's the one I'm thinking of, yes. Ooh, that was really funny, actually. Oh, this uh, is a football one. Kings Anze Kopitar edges out Bergeron Couturier for second Selkie win. And as we predicted, Gerard Gallant wins the Jack Adams, which, how can you, how can you not give it to him, Right. Right. Uh, Pekka Rene tops up Vasilevsky and Hellebuck to win his first Vesna. I think that's very much deserved. Honestly, any one of the three of them could have got the Vesna trophy this year. But uh, I think he deserved it. He's, he's been so close so many years in a row. Uh, George McPhee named GM of the year. I mean, he basically started and set up both teams that were in the final this year, so yeah. it's no surprise. Um, and Taylor Hall wins his first Hart trophy. Almost lost out, though. Well, he can. I mean, he didn't win the Lindsay, so... And here is the first team all-star for the for the year. McDavid at center. Hall is left wing. Hall left wing. Ovechkin on the right. Kucherov is right wing. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Drew Doughty and Victor and Hedman then, are defense. And then your goalie is... Pekka Rene. Rene. Yes. Uh, can you name the second team all-star? At, at center, you have. I'd say Drew. No, McKinnon. Really? Drew is left wing, though. You are right there. Well, Drew's not a winger, he's a center. Well, they have him at, at left wing here. It's... I guess he plays both. And then I would have Ovechkin as a winger. Right winger. Blake Wheeler. Why? I don't know. He had 49 goals. The How def- did you not put the, him? The, the defensemen, do you know who they are? Uh, I don't, I... Seth Jones, PK Subban. No, I was going to say, probably the brother combo. And then. Very good. I, I, I got that. It's good. Mm-hmm. And then for goalie? That last game? Hellebuck. No. Disagree with that at all. 100%. How do you leave a 49 goal score? Outside of that. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 49 goals. I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. Led the league in goals on the season. Uh, again, for like, what, the eighth time? Right? Yeah, anyways, like, whatever. Best pure goal scorer of this generation. By far. Now, here's an actual question. What's that? If he plays long enough, do you actually think Ovechkin de- breaks Gretzky's record for most goals? If he keeps at this pace? In, by the end of his career, whether we know or that, whatever that might be, yeah. does he break Gretzky's record? If he plays until he's, we'll say, 40, 41, and he stays at this pace, he's going to be really close. I don't know if he can beat it, but he will be the closest out of anybody. <laughs> but does he do it at the end of his career? I don't think so. I think he's going to come up just short. I think he'll be within 10 goals, to be honest. I'm going to say 8, just because of the irony. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, you know what? I think he'll be within 8. You're right, within 8. Which would give him 884, I believe. Six? Because it's, it's 894. Is it 894? It's 894 is what uh, Gretzky has. So it'll be like 886. 886. Or he ends up with 888. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. He ends up with 888. Just so, like, so close, but not quite. I agree to that. Or 887, and then there's the Crosby references are always going to be there. That actually would also be really funny. Yeah. I, I, I like that. That'd be funny. Uh, or you can have 890, and then it's 890. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. It'd be fair really enough. funny. Um, also, Manai can be a Award of Excellence winner this week. I'm sending out to 
the special select eight people from the cruise that serviced and took care of my family while we were there. You know who you are. Thank you. That was a damn good time. To Celebrity Infinity and actually Celebrity Cruise Line, I sent in the uh, the survey. I named those eight individuals. They deserve a raise, a substantial raise. So congrats to them. They were awesome. They made our trip even better. Yeah. All right. Right on. Now, before we end this podcast, can we give out plugs that are better than Mike Malawaney's forehead? Mike has plugs now? Holy fuck a lot's chances of us. Just saying, I mean. You mean plugs that are better than him because he is a plug? Yeah. It's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column, you said it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yes, let's do some plugs and... Oh, wait, wait, this sorry, wrong podcast. Uh, Backbreaker Media is now on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Podcast Player. Fuck YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are on there, but fuck them. Backbreaker Media. Backbreaker Media, VOD.pivotshare.com. Pivot Share, I've heard, has also opened up its own wrestling yep, thing. Yeah, Power Slam. So we are apparently on that now, which is awesome. Yeah. I don't know if our whole... You know, sign up, get two for two weeks for free plus three months. Go to the Backbreaker uh, uh, Media page on Facebook for more details. Yes, you might still be able to because get... we did not read it, so please go there to learn. Yeah, potentially you could get three months half off because of your boys tag struggle. So, if you do, you're welcome. Yeah. If not, well, it's your own damn fault. Yeah. You should be saying, hey. Can we get some promo stuff using the tag struggle code? Because they're our boys, yes. and we want to get free stuff. Uh, also, whatamaneuver.net, go get our old uh, retro WE and original or OG The Struggle t-shirts. Still working on other merch. Yep. I've been away. You've been doing your thing. So well, the reason why this is taking so long, and we'll be completely, completely honest, we've put zero time into it. So... We've been very busy with real life. Well, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I'm counting down, literally counting down to a wedding. I mean... Literally counting down. I mean, I'm doing my thing, you're doing your thing. I we're mean, doing our thing. I mean... And we're doing their thing. And then occasionally we got to worry about doing our thing. So, I mean... Exactly. And one, one of these days we will get the clothing line thing done. The merch thing. Yes. Um, I do have ideas, but I will let you know in private. Sounds good. I mean, yeah. we, we keep talking. We got ideas. Yep. It's just about getting them nailed down now. Yep. Just like Jesus, going full nail. By the way, ra- <laughs> ra- random update, completely unrelated. <laughs> Let's um, hope so. I, w- I was wrong about the Celebrity Infinity Elite Eight people. I was thinking it's actually only six. I can't count. Well, anyways, it's six that are. The six well, let's say you're in Florida. They can't count either. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, speaking of counting, uh, we are at episode 80, people. And yes. uh, we want you to enjoy this episode because next week we'll be back with a whole new episode. Uh, which quite To yag or not to yag? Yeah. That is the question. The yag too. Indeed. So... Um, Yep, we will see you then. As of right now, we are Chris Parrish. And Maniac. We are Tech Struggle. We are real, and we have nothing coming up this weekend, so we'll talk to you next week. Well, we, I mean, you're going to the home opener for the Eskimo game. Goddamn right! Yeah, you're going to pick up your new jersey. Woo! I am going to drink a lot of beer. You should join me. Get some tickets. I'm just saying. Um, maybe we'll come up with shit. Maybe we'll come come up with uh, debt because of alcohol. But yeah, fair enough. other than that, we are a little bit of all right, and we're struggleicious, but we're we're real and spectacular. There you go. Woo-hoo! I'm back, bitches. Yeah. When your heart's pounding out of your chest, you can feel the sick chicken as you're running out of breath. If you're ready to.